Welcome to the module Data Dimension and in this particular lecture we'll be talking about next technique that is K-fold cross-validation and I'll be giving you intuition about this particular technique. We'll learn why to use it, how to use it and why it is so beneficial when we are talking about cross-validation. So what are the steps involved when we are talking about cross-validation using K-fold? First of all, we have to reserve some portion of sample data. For example, you have a small data, okay? Or you can say that if you are working on a single data and you are just performing a training and testing part, then to be assured that your model is not biased or it's just not fitting over the data, you can use a cross-validation technique. So for that, you reserve a small portion of your data, right? So let's say I have reserved 20% of my data for the test part as we do always and the rest of it will be the training part right so what we do is basically we reserve this portion for the testing and then train our models on this particular training part and then we test the model by comparing the result with these particular test data right so this is how we validate that yes this particular training is performing well when we are comparing the predicted values with the tested score or tested data. So now let's understand what cross validation using k-fold. So basically we split our data into k number of subsets. For example you have a small data set let's say 100 entries only and if you are splitting your data to a ratio 80 is to 20 then 80 entries will be your training part and 20 will be your testing part and your model will give certain results and will get a certain degree of accuracy. But how can be you sure that your model has not just mucked up the concept? It should be learning. It should not just fix over the patterns of the data you have. It should be learning. So your hypothesis should not be just based on that particular data. It should be generalized. So what to do when we have such a kind of data set? So in that case, what we do is we split our data into K number of subsets. That why we say K fold, right? So we split our data to K number of subsets and then these subsets are in such a form. Suppose this was our original data. We have prepared these five subsets in this. We have prepared this data as our testing part. Then we have used this data as our testing part. So initially we train our model over this training data and test against it. We have some result, so result one. Then we do the same iteration, but then we train our model from fresh on the given data and we compare, then we test our model on this test data and find result two. So all these iterations will be independent of each other and will separate our data in such forms and prepare such subsets and then test our model on these test subsets. So we'll be having R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5 results. And using these five results, we can average out or generalize our results that yes, this is the particular accuracy our model has. So this is how we can deal with the data dimensions we have and we can be sure of our model training, right? So that's why we perform k-fold cross validation so as to divide our data to k subsets, then find out the results and then cross validate the performance at each iteration and be sure and yes our model is working perfectly fine. So that's why it's so important and this is how we perform it. Well k-fold cross validation is a very important technique when it comes to the data dimensions. Why? Because whenever we have a data which is not enough to train our models, okay? Then in that case, if we train our model, there might be a chance that the model has not learned the concept, but it has just mugged up the data. And the result it will produce will not be a general result. It will be dependent on that data set only. And in future, if you test some other data, then the results that model will give will not be credible. So to add credibility to our work or to be assured that yes, our model has worked perfectly fine, we use k-fold validation technique. As I have explained you in the intuition video, this data divides the data into different training and testing parts and performs the iteration so as to be assured that yes, our 
model is working fine or these are the results as per the data change so we'll see all that stuff in this lecture so i have already imported my libraries that is pandas the basic ones pandas numpy matplotlib and then i'm using pre-processing module for the scaling techniques then i'm using the train test split to split out data then random forest regressor to predict and mean scale direct to test the results we have then i'm importing k fold using the module model selection and then i'm importing my data uh, and then i'm importing my data sets because in this lecture we'll be using a predefined data set that is a boston housing data so let's name the data as data equals to data sets sorry data sets dot load boston okay so that's the data we have now let's print the data so that's the data these are the input values and uh, this is not a data frame that's the array notation let's check if we can use a data frame over that so pd dot data frame data Okay. so here we have our inputs we have our target it's not a data frame it's in the form of array and if we check the features we have these are all the features present in this data it's clearly describing that we have a boston housing uh, boston house prices data set and these are different instances we have so it's all telling about the features and the column we have okay now what we do is will separate out the input and output of our data so x so input let's name it as x and it will be data dot data okay and then x why i am doing this because it's clearly given that we have two components in this data one is named as data and the other one is target so we'll assign target to the output that is y and assigning input to the and assigning data to the x okay and now we'll be importing uh, we'll be preparing our output as well so our output will be y equals to data dot target okay completely fine so also let's print it so that's the targeted values we have so these are all the parameters we have and these are the corresponding labels so if it's instance one then the output to this instance is this value okay so now we have our input and output with us let's find out the features we have so features equals to data dot feature names these are inbuilt functions that are associated with this data in scikit-learn so i'm using that and let's print these also so these are the features we have so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so we have 13 features and corresponding to that 13 features we have the corresponding output in the target values okay now our target is to split our data so as to train right so let's split for that we are preparing the components x train x test y train and then y test using the train test split module so train test split passing on the input and outputs so our input is x then y and then test size equals to let's be at a ratio of 80 to 20 okay so here we go now let's check the shape of a data so x train dot shape oh sorry uh, okay let's it. yeah so we have 404 entries in training and we have 13 columns as they are input so now you can see that how less our data is so to ensure that our model is working fine we need k-fold cross-validation 
at first i'll not use kfold i'll just give this data to the machine learning model and will compare the performance with or without kfold technique okay so now what we'll do is we'll use a random forest regressor and we'll compare it with with or without kfold so we'll say random forest equals to random forest sorry random forest regressor and let's set the ensemblers to be 100 then we have to fit our data over the training data we have so rf equals to rf dot fit over the training data we have that is x train and y train and then we'll say predict the values so let's name it as predictions equals to rf dot predict what we have to predict is we have to predict the x test values okay so here we go we have our predictions with us let's check the shape of predictions predictions dot shape so we have 102 predictions with us okay so now we'll find the mean scared error so mean scared we have already imported this above so mean scared error we have to pass on the parameters so we'll pass the y test and we will now compare it with the predictions of our model so it's predicting with an error of 6.6 .6 over here okay now we'll perform our cross validation technique for that we'll say let's name it as k fold only and now we'll import our k fold so k fold model we are initializing it and then we have to pass off so we are splitting our data into five components we'll uh, that means we are performing five iterations with different sample of straining and testing output okay so n splits equals to five and then uh, let's set random state equals to zero then we'll shuffle our data no we don't want to shuffle our data that means we follow a fixed data and then we'll take out the components keeping uh, without shuffling it so that we can be sure that the training part in the previous data is not this uh, the testing part in the previous data is not the same now okay so k fold model is ready i'll show you how the data is been split over here so let's name it as train index okay and then test index in k fold split because it will be returning two values so i have prepared train index and test index so k fold dot split what we have to split is we have to split the x data and then we'll be printing our train value and test values let's see how okay so now you can see that we have our train data so now we have our training data testing data then the second partition we have training data testing data and so on till five partitions so we have five partitions with us and our training and testing models are ready now we'll pass these data to our machine learning model and we'll compare its performance so let's again prepare a random forest a fresh one so rf1 equals to random forest regressor okay and then for error we'll prepare the list so that we can see how it's performing so again for train index test index in k fold dot split sorry k fold dot split x and now the work begins so we have x train comma y train sorry x train and x test right x train and x test in x train index and in test index right and similarly we have our y train and y test in those particular index values so train index and y test index okay so let's initialize the model so rf1 dot random forest it will in 
at each iteration it will initialize separately okay so it will work unbiased for all the data sets we have so random forest regressor yeah and then similar part rf1 equals to rf1 dot fit x train y train then prediction equals to rf1 dot predict x test and then error dot we'll append all the results in this error list error dot append again let's copy this mean scared error y test prediction okay it's name prediction over here so here we go uh, wait a second spelling mistake so the model is trained now and let's check the errors we have so that's the results we have for the partition one we have error 7.72 for second we have 12 then 16 then 48 then 22 so now you can see that how that why we say that using a small data set is not good for training a machine learning model because in that case it will mug up your results and using k-fold cross validation you see that how the results are varying based on the training and testing data sets you are giving because the data is very low to train a model and in that case it's not finding out all the logics or it's not finding out the best hypothesis to fit your data so if you have such a low data and you have to use a machine learning model then applying a k-fold technique after applying a k-fold technique you can what what you can do is you can take out the mean or average out the error of your models and you can say that that's the error results of our model plus minus certain value so that you can be certain that yes your machine learning model is working with this error and in this range right so this is why we use a k-fold cross validation technique and this is how it works so best of luck thanks for following this video and we'll meet in the next lecture